Hello everybody, and welcome, welcome back to Minathon. Oh, we have people, look at them all. Um, and look at this place, by the way. Um, this has been done, I think, pretty much today. Um, this is the new uh, spawn hub for the minigame map. Uh, there's random blocks missing here, I do not know why. In fact... This staircase just vanishes. I I'm sure they know what they're doing. Um, exciting news. We have Fire UK building for us. Oh, hey, banner's on. Uh, he's probably going to call me now as a result. And I notice that um, we've, we've got these animated symbols, by the way, as you can probably see. <laughs> oh, banner. Uh, and it looks like somebody might be... Oh, somebody has been doing one for me. That's kind of cool. Let let's play it. I want to see... How it looks. I don't know if it's going to loop or not. Duh. Oh yeah, okay. So um, yeah, it's kind of a kind of a neat idea actually. I like it. Um, sort of adds a little bit of character to it all. And I think it's just set to run once. Yeah, currently it's set to run once. Look at that house, guys. Look at that house. Um, Minathon. We have been busy. Um, first of all, yeah, we've got we've got builders galore. Uh, we've got some really good builders. Fire UK are one of the most well-known builders uh, in Minecraft, I think. Uh, and I'm not sure if they built this or not, but I know that they, they were planning to work on the on the hub. So I, it kind of looks a bit... It's a bit of a weird fit, in my opinion, almost. But I think the roads look better. Um, and I'm not a, I'm not a buildy person, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay out of that, uh, keep my opinions to myself. Um, we have more exciting news. We've got loads of great YouTubers, Redstoners, advertisers, stuff like that. And um, it's kind of tentative at the moment, but it's looking like we're actually going to get two of the members of Minecraft, two, two of the Mojang developers on board for this uh, for this event. Bannerwolf has been spending time talking to them, showing them around the map, and it's looking like we're going to get Mojang support for this event, which is just going to be fantastic. We've got um, Comic-Con on board as well. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it all because, um, I don't know, I don't want to disappoint or misinform. But um, let's see. Let's head over to my place. Um, one slight problem with the server at the moment. Uh, we're on a 4 gig server, which I should point out has been donated to us by um, Wyatt, who is the owner of uh, Ready to Frag. And... He's been very kindly given us a free 4 gigabyte server until... Oh, I shouldn't look over there. Hang on, let me refresh. Um, a free 4 gigabyte server uh, for us to use until the day of the event. And then he's actually su supplying us with several huge um, things. Okay, so... Um, what's happened since last time? Well, first of all, first of all, um, Musemat has been busy. So busy. Um, you may remember that Musemat is our, is our dedicated builder for, um, for this, this map. And I'm going to turn around in a second. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the incredible, um, spawn, the, the lobby for Block Hunt. Uh, he's going with a sort of a, a four theme thing. We've got fire, um, we have air, water, and earth. Uh, did somebody say something? I keep, <laughs> I keep thinking. Oh, before I forget, scoreboard teams join recording. That just gives everybody on the server a message to say that I'm recording um, so that they... So that they know, <laughs> which was requested by Bannerwolf because he didn't realize. Um, so incredible build, looking fantastic. Uh, the four block hunt areas, I believe, are going to be are going to be themed. I need to talk to Musemat a little bit about it uh, to see um, what happens with that. Uh, but I have been busy too, and these signs are active. You can punch them, and they will teleport you to. Um, to the edge here because it's quite a big arena so it's a kind of a shortcut and we will have a sign on the wall here which you can click to actually join the game if it's um if it's busy so um i suppose we should probably go over the redstone for this quickly uh, i had a job hiding the redstone let me tell you because there's a glass ring on the floor um so let's drop down here a second uh it's it's fairly 
it's fairly simple all in all um, there's four of these little units here and they're all connected up to this clock I'll explain the clock in a second um, so it looks like we're having a bit of there should not be two melons in there I have no idea how there were two melons in there I'm very sad uh, anyhow <laughs> so what we're doing here is we have four squid uh, they're invisibly sitting on um, on wither skulls in front of each of these signs and uh, if you want to know more watch the last episode because I go into it in more detail there but what we've got here is basically this clock is constantly trying to ah, charity's calling me sorry that was the minathon chat I'll just switch to do not disturb okay so uh, this is uh, executing on behalf of the closest squid to the command block which is the one above it to teleport teleport anyone with a with a damage dealt score of one or more to a location uh, and obviously that will then mean that if you have punched a squid and you're stood near that squid you'll be teleported over there so that's how it works and if it succeeds in teleporting somebody it will uh, kill the wither skull it will kill uh, it will teleport the squid into the void and it will summon a new squid and this is where I'd like to um, give uh, give credit to something that a viewer um, suggested let me quickly go to my inbox <laughs> because I've forgotten his name uh, credit where credit is due his name is chippy 99100 and uh, he told me that if you set the air value for a squid to minus 20 they never suffocate uh, which is fantastic because before I was setting their air value to this number here which is it's like the biggest number that uh, that kind of variable in Minecraft can handle uh, but I mean infinity is, is a lot better than a finite number right so fantastic that's very good that means they're never gonna suffocate and vanish on us uh, but on the off chance that the squid do somehow vanish, that's what this this line of snow is for. This clock over here is constantly testing to see if there are squid um, missing. Okay, so there's a, basically a slow hopper clock running here. And what's going on? Oh. Um, so they may need me, but if it's urgent let me let me know okay so <laughs> this is testing for squid basically and uh it's slightly broken right now which is why the torch just turned on but i need to fix it uh the idea is that it uses this hopper on subtraction mode so that if there are less than four squid it will turn on this line and um refresh all the squid so it basically just powers that refresh button there um yeah, that's basically that. So I, I do need to fix that. It seems to be spawning the squid a lot um, at the moment, like constantly. But that's fine. Uh, let's go and talk about something else for a second uh, for this episode. We are going to be uh, potentially moving people around a little bit because that needs to be sorted soon. And also doing block selection. Uh, and this is this is pretty cool. I'm quite happy with how this works. Um, signs quickly 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 signs um, this thing which we were using two episodes ago to detect how many players there were on this sign here it's kind of moot in the next snapshot which I believe comes out tomorrow I have um, I have been told by members of Minecraft of Mojang on Twitter that you will be able to paste like print scoreboard values directly to signs so we will need one command block for this sign rather than all those so i'm leaving that be for now we'll ignore it and move over to something rather more exciting so um thank you to everybody who submitted videos showing me how to use uh, inventory manipulation so that you can click on an item and it will select that item for you they, they were very interesting videos i just remembered i have coffee hang on it's still slightly warm i i do this a lot um Oh, that's good coffee. Uh, I, I sort of make myself a coffee and I put it down and then I start recording or editing and I completely forget it's there until I suddenly realize my throat's parched. So, um, thank you to everyone who submitted those videos. However, I'm going with this. Uh, Drink me potions. Muse Matt suggested it. I thought it was really cool. So, you can see that if you scroll between them, you've got grass, workbench, cobblestone, torch, glass glass workbench cobblestone and torch I've done four for now just to test things out um, and and words 
Okay, so if you hover over this, let's use this one. Um, you can see that it has a little bit of lore and it says drink this to select workbench as your block type for this match. I'm sort of halfway through this as I as I explain it to you. And this one here has has the potion value hidden, um, which you can do. But for now, I've just I've left these showing. So you can see they all have mining fatigue, but a different value. So this one's four, this one's three, this one's two, and this one is one, but it's hidden. And this line of command blocks over here is testing for active effects with certain um, with certain strengths. So I don't know what they're currently doing. I don't really want to pull up a scoreboard. Um, if they're testing something, are you guys testing something? Can I pull up a scoreboard on the sidebar? Uh, I I just don't want to get in the way of their of their thing. <laughs> Hang on a second. Okay, we've been given permission. Um, let's put our AGS potions drunk scoreboard on the side of the screen. Um, and this, this is how it works, okay? Uh, each of these has a different mining fatigue value. So I can drink this one, and my AGS potions drunk score changes to one. I can drink this one, it'll change it to two, three, and this is, uh, each one has a unique ID, so I could go back to this one, and it'll change it to one again, rather than counting up or anything, and this one will be four. Um, so this way, we have four identical looking potions, so as far as um, an observer is concerned who sees me drinking one of these potions, I could be drinking any of them. They can't tell what I've selected, what block type I've selected, which I like. I think that's um, that's handy um, so that we can be all secretive about it and you can't say, oh, I know that Purple Sparks... Why did I call myself Purple Sparks? Guys, if you, if you, if you love me, call me Sparks. Um, I don't like the fact that I my, my name is Purple Sparks. And as soon as name changing comes along, I'm going to try and change it. I, I feel irate and in need of coffee. Hang on. This is the this is the drinking on camera episode. <laughs> so um, the way that this works is that we have one command block here for every potion, and they're just variants of this. So it's setting um, all players to have a scoreboard of uh, value of potions drunk to one. Uh, if they have the active effect of four, which is mining fatigue, which I chose because it's very unlikely to be being used by anyone in any mini game in this whole thing. Um, with an amplifier of zero, so that means just ordinary mining fatigue. And then this one's doing the same thing, but with a mining fatigue uh, amplifier of one, which is mining fatigue two, and that sets your score to two instead of one. So it's basically one thing testing for each level of mining fatigue. Uh, I believe you can get mining fatigue nine. I haven't actually tested this. Let's let's try it a second. Um, amplifier um, eight. I believe is mining is is mining fatigue nine. Confusingly, right. Let's just check. Mining fatigue potion potency eight. That should, that should. So it looks like we can do it. And uh, the way that you hide this, by the way, with this one here, you can see that it doesn't show the mining fatigue. If anybody's interested, is hide flags thirty two. Uh, you can hide different flags like enchantments or things. I think enchantments is one. Um, 32 is the value for hiding potion effects, so I can do hide flags um, 32 on all of these, and it will it will hide that effect for me. Let me do that a second so we can see how it'll look. Okay, doesn't that look that looks sleek, doesn't it? And you don't even need to go into your inventory to select your block. You can just scroll over it, and it'll tell you um, what it'll turn you into and if you don't understand what it's saying you can hover over and it'll it'll tell you explicitly um, that it's going to turn you into that block type and once you drink it we can use this scoreboard value to um, tell you that you are now going to be a workbench I think I think we're gonna go with a one-time select it's just so much simpler than um, working out which potion is missing and giving them that one back or something so I think once you've drunk your potion you've chosen your, your potion for that round and it'll clear all the other potion types from your inventory uh, we'll do it that way I think uh, so that's kind of that's one thing that needs doing and then we can then use that um, we'll convert that potions drunk value back to zero and then give them a block value which will be their block ID and will 
control what block spawns at their location throughout the rest of the game. Uh, another important thing that we need to do, potentially this episode, is moving people around. When they join the game, we need to we need to own them. We need to uh, let the game know that they belong to the game. Uh, so we need to, you know, give them scoreboards and teams and things. Uh, we want to make sure nobody can punch each other in this lobby. So, for instance, we want to set everybody to the lobby team in here and make sure that, um, that PvP is turned off because, uh, well, firstly, if you let, let people punch each other, it'll just be carnage in here. Uh, secondly, we only want people to be able to punch squid when they're in this room. So... Um, we need to also make sure that we set everybody's damage dealt value to zero when they join the game. So my plan is to spawn them to this platform and deal with them here. We'll probably put this in an enclosed room later. There's barrier blocks here at the moment. I'm running out of breath. <laughs> uh, great. So I guess I'll, I'll just do a bit more work off camera, I suppose. Well, here I am in the creative world in the new snapshot, 14 week 25B. This is the new. This is the next day and the snapshot has come out. I've been playing around with signs and um, Minecraft keeps crashing in this snapshot, which is why the server doesn't have this installed yet. Uh, and I've been looking at what signs can and can't do in the new snapshot. So um, <laughs> first of all, let's hope it doesn't crash again. I was trying to make a clickable sign. Um, and the way I was doing this with, was with the JSON. You can see that this is um, a coloured sign. The text is coloured. You can now do that. Um, so the, I've got this sort of dark red colour set up um, for line one of this text. I don't understand JSON very well. Um, it's very new to me. But there's this new thing you can do. Uh, click event, action, run command, trigger, join fire, set one. And what this is supposed to do is when I click it, it should change my join fire value to one. Uh, you can create a trigger command like this, and you need to enable it as well, uh, like that. So it's enabled, right? And I'm in survival, but clicking and right clicking do do nothing, unfortunately. It looks like click commands don't work for signs. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I'm happy because my squid system isn't deprecated or whether I'm sad because I need to use a squid system when this would have been a lot a lot simpler Wow it hasn't crashed yet this is great this is my third attempt at recording this let's go over here actually I'm just gonna stop recording and start again in case I lose the file one moment okay so this is the other thing I've been looking at you can now print a scoreboard value directly to a sign so that two there is variable if I just show you scoreboard objective space sidebar um, Fire players, yeah. So I've got a dummy player, a fake player called number of players, and I can set his value to anything I like. Let's set it to 15. Click this, and when I click this button here, oh no, it's crashed. I'll be right back. And when I click this, it will change it to 15 out of 24. So you can use this to sort of very easily, variably select uh, or display how many players there are in your map. Um, and we've already got the detection system. So that makes it a lot smaller and more compact, which is pretty good. I'm scared to move every time I do, or every time anything, I, I, I do anything and it crashes. I think I'm going to have to end the episode here, um, moving as little as possible, because, oh, this snapshot, yeah, I'm hoping they'll release a, a, a more stable version, but that's going to be it for me today, I think. Um, people seem to really like the series and seem to ask a lot for the next episode before it's ready. Uh, or out and I just got to say that there is another map making series on this channel guys uh, it's called true to nor uh, map making with spark season one uh, so if you if you enjoy the map making th there's another one <laughs> on this channel so I'll put a link on the screen now and uh, in the description and I'll also put a link to this JSON creator uh, I don't know this JSON very well but there's a web app which lets you just type in the text and the color and uh, things like that, uh, which I find very useful and you may like as well. So without further ado, uh, I will, I'll will i say goodbye and look forward to seeing you next episode. Um, yeah, ciao!